the worst thing you could ever do as a job seeker is to start um, sending letters out on December 18th. Okay, mm -hmm. don't bother. Do not bother. You know, if you if you want to waste time, that's great. Okay, but I would get a better strategy in December and go for the best time to get a job. And that's the second week of January. I did a live stream a while back with one of our favorite people here at the Future Art Center professor, Petrula Verontaikis. We talked about everything that goes into finding the job of your dreams. We even did a mock interview, which was released in a previous video. So if you haven't seen that, go check it out. There were a few more tips that we thought were worth sharing. So here they are. So if I'm a student, I just graduated and I know Art Center graduates people three times a year. If mm -hmm. I just graduated, I might feel that I don't know anybody, Petrula. Who am I supposed to reach out to? Easy. I want to get that dream job. Easy. So who do I reach out to? Easy, mm. easy. Uh, LinkedIn is just astonishing. Okay. I do a search for the company. Say the company is Collins in New York or San Francisco. So I okay. do a search for Art Center College of Design and Collins. Poof. All of a sudden, there are probably at least a dozen people that have mm -hmm. graduated from Art Center that have affiliated themselves with Collins. So some still work there, some maybe worked there in the past, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden, you, I mean, how easy is that? You know, so this is not all that mysterious. And then, I'm testing it right now. Knowing, I'm testing it right now. Knowing <laughs> what to ask them, yes. um, under, you know, really reading their profiles and seeing mm -hmm. whether they're still there, what their role is there, when they graduated from Art Center, and and just you know because you're in a network, and it doesn't have to be Art Center. It can be, you know, Cal State Long Beach. It can be, you know, whatever design school you go to. Or in the case of the future, it may be that I find that somebody there actually is, um, you know, has has the future in that they're watching, and you know they're they're talking about how they're learning, and you know you might actually find like-minded people in this network of yours, Chris. Mm. I think that is the, the next step here. And that is that somehow you're offering what they're looking for, but you're offering more value also. So if you have any way to get, an in, get insight as to what that value is that they need, it really helps you. You know, if you have a portfolio full of things that are just a bunch of artifacts, you know, like luxury packaging, luxury retail packaging, and a bunch of posters. When you go to show that, people are going, okay, well, I understand the design skills, but where's the thinking about how those can be translated into something that can be appreciated by our customers or client base in a virtual environment? What are the, what are the things that are going to facilitate that in regards to social media or ways to promote it that aren't going to be about showing up in uh, a high-end retail store and seeing it there on display. You know, get out of the, the things that are the doom scrolling and get into figuring out who's doing well, what industries are doing well, and I'm trying to identify whether you have any connection to people in those industries, going back to what we talked about when we first started this conversation. Mm -hmm. I know, man, okay. I don't want to make it sound that it's super easy. I know I'm, I'm you know, I've got that calm oh, yoga voice, right? <laughs> but I, I, you know, I, I'm actually just using kind of logic. And the logic part is just being really objective about, about something that people want to be, get really emotional about. Like, I want this. I don't know how to get that. I, I'm not sure. And I'm, uh, you know, and there's a whole bunch of difficulty wrapped around it because when you're a job seeker and you're having to work really hard, it can really deteriorate your, your mood and make you feel like you're not going to get what you want. But just having a better idea as to how to organize yourself, how to organize your materials, know what your audience is looking for, and that old adage like "skate to uh, to to where the puck is." Like that's that's where you want to go. So this is really important that you're not looking for jobs that that in industries. Like I did a lot of restaurant design, especially fast casual restaurant design, years and years ago in my business. If I was still doing that, 
it would not be going very well because they're right. really having a tough time. And it's not just, oh, they need a rebrand. You know, it's, I don't know when it's going to be better and they're going to really be in a, a situation of completely restructuring. The last thing they're going to need is, you know, heavy hitting outside branding help. Both a cover letter and a resume are ways of storytelling and they're exercises in hierarchy of information. So you may have the same facts, right? But positioning them um, differently in, on a resume or carrying someone through in a revealing um, uh, way in a cover letter, it makes all the difference in the world. Because if you send out a whole bunch of canned cover letters, people read them and they just, they look, they sound generic. They sound generic. You really have to craft these things to real people if you expect to get real jobs. So it's not at all about templates. It's about thinking and, and designing communication that solves a problem. It's what you do best as a graphic designer, right? The worst time to look for a job is December, especially after the, sec uh, after the first week of December. Okay, because everybody's gearing up for the holidays. And if you start making um, all kinds of trying to, to, to outreach, people are really busy just trying to juggle things. By the second week, they're figuring out just how to get things ready to maybe take some time off in between the holidays. It's a really compromised time and you will not get someone's attention. The worst thing you could ever do as a job seeker is to start um, sending letters out on December 18th. Okay, mm -hmm. don't bother. Do not bother. It will, you know, if you, if you want to waste time, that's great. Okay, but I would get a better strategy in December and go for the best time to get a job. And that's the second week of January. Okay, because people leave their jobs, but they're not gonna leave their jobs before they get a holiday bonus or all those days off. So there's a whole bunch of benefits that people have in around the holidays that they don't want to let go. Oh, I'm going to leave my job. I think I'll leave my job right before I get all these benefits. So they'll stay and then drop the bomb like the first Monday in January. And then all the teams are scrambling to figure out what they're going to do. They've got tons of work to do. And then this extra layer of finding somebody. So I want your stuff. If you're looking for a job to be on their desks, probably um, two to three days after they get back to work. Um, I don't don't make it the day they get back to work because there's going to be a big pile. But then they'll know they'll know more what they're looking for, and there's a lot of activity. There's there's a lot of people moving around, and that's the best time. I hope those tips help you when you're on the lookout for your next job. If you're interested in learning all of the ins and outs of resume writing interviewing and understanding what companies are looking for, check out Petrula's course on the Future Academy, Land Your Dream Job. Whether you're just out of school or haven't had a job interview in a while, Petrula takes you through everything you need to know to impress the people who might just be hiring you. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the future.